Hello, welcome back. Now I'm going to show you it's not just an inventory anymore. It's now there's an actual world. It's not the best world at the moment, but it's getting better. This is just a temporary graphic, so obviously that'll be changed. Um, same game, or same inventory system. I've just uh, decided to make it more of a game. Um, kind of having fun with this, so kind of built the world, and you can you know, move your guy around around the world and uh, it's it's coming along pretty good. So I'm gonna go over and kinda show you what I did to kinda make this to make this happen. Obviously not all the code because I'm freaking up to eight hundred plus lines of code in this silly little thing that I started. So alright, let's close this down. Now First thing you want to do, people like to play video games in full screen. So this code right here will set it up to where you just have the full screen. You don't have, you know, the X or the minimize or whatever. Uh, that'll just go ahead and set that up for you. Um, now, the next thing you want to do is... Oh, yeah, I was going to show you my new, my new class. So I have a tile class, and every 50... 50 by 50 are the pixels, so um, 50 pixels up, 50 pixels across um, is a tile. So each tile has a X and a Y, and then also each tile can take an in-game object. So um, an in-game object is not nothing too special. Um, they have a, a picture and it has a um, code name, just code name I haven't used at all, but mainly just the picture. But um, player inherits from in-game object, so it can actually take a, um, a tile class can actually take a player as well. And the player obviously is going to have a lot more variables, um, but you know, this way you could inherit, you know, maybe you want to inherit other things as well, NPCs or whatever, they could all inherit from in-game object, and they could go right, and they could all plug right into your tile. So um, that's going to be important as I move forward to the code to remember. Just remember there's tiles, which is actually the game. It's just a whole bunch of tiles. Um, right now it's 100 by 100 grid. <clears throat> so the tiles, and oh, and the tiles take, um, they can take an in-game object. So right here, this is just a um, double for loop. And I'm looping through all one, um, well, I guess it'd be uh, 10,000 tiles, because 100 by 100. So uh, right here, uh, let me just adjust this. Not sure how that happened. So OCD. Um, the uh, X number of tiles and Y number of tiles, that's just your... Um, the size of your arrays. So it's looping through the, the tile array over and over and over. Each time it goes through a tile array, um, it's going to make just some randomization effects here with these lines, or with these lines, and it's either going to call uh, one of two constructors. The first constructor, if you look at my tile class, I've got two constructors right now. Um, the first constructor right here uh, just you just set the uh, X and the Y so the location um, and the object is going to be null. The second constructor you actually tell it what object is going to go go in there. And um, the in-game objects I put those all in a in a list so that you can you can see right here game objects. So that's just a list. Um, you know, like an actual, like a list, um, like a code list, right here, a list. Okay, and um, it's just completely randomized what one they get. Right now, there's only two, it's just those two different types of trees. Um, but as the list grows, it'll start plugging more and more things in there. All right, right. So there's a, there's a, you know, right now it's, there's a. 20% chance it'll call the one with an object in it, 
80% chance that it won't. And you'll just get null, and that's why there's the white spots. So, um, tile. This is for the, this is where I plug the player actually into the game, which is just the picture of the head at the moment, but, uh, whatever. Just for now, I mean, we're just trying to get things set up. So, um, player point on screen. This is, this is important. I'll talk about that in a second. But you can see right here, um, we have a tile. And it already got in, initialized. It already got built in the for loop. But we're just picking a very specific tile because I want it to be right at the center when we load the game up. Um, so that's it, uh, 56, uh, 59. So plugs your player in. Remember, player is is a player. P-L-A-Y-E-R. Player class. So player object. Object from the player class. So now um, this initializes all the tiles in the game. All 10,000 of them. And it gives them all random ones. Uh, gives this these double four loops just randomize what objects go in. So I mean, every time you load this game up, it's going to have different trees, different places. Um, and then the player, we're, get, we're putting the player object in a very specific tile. All right. Oh, and uh, player point. This is just a, a variable that I'm using to keep track of where my player is. So player point on screen. Um, and it gets set right here. And then we'll be making adjustments to it as we go forward um, operating the controls. So I've got my controls, and it's just a bunch of key codes. Your standard WS, WASD key codes. So what happens here? Um, also, you can't move, so I'll just fire it up here so you'll see it. If you look here, I can press the up. I can't move into, an into a tile that already has an object in it. So I can move wherever I want, but I cannot move over a tree, or if there was another object there, another, you know, a monster, or a loot chest, or, you know, whatever I wanted to put there, a rock, I mean, I can't move there. So I'm going to show you how, how that happens. It's just, so, uh, move up, so you look here, if, um, player point dot x, um, so this is a tile, this is asking tile, and then this is just where the player is, this point x and point y, it's point, like like the class, point, and then uh, minus one, because when you go up, you know, when you move up, the actual numbers get smaller, right? So minus one, that's just one tile up. So if it's null, you can proceed, it'll proceed with all the code. So uh, the first thing that'll happen is it'll just go ahead and take the object, which is in your current tile, and toss that into the tile directly above it, or negative one y, tile y negative one, right? And then um, it'll set the tile to null. That's why, you know, you don't end up with more than one player uh, object, you know? It actually deletes the old player and just, when you think about coding, you think about moving things, that never really happens, right? You're actually making new things and deleting the old one, right? So, you know, you're making the new one, putting it into the tile directly above it, and then you're deleting the old one. And this one, you're adjusting the player point. Um, the, you know, the player point, the actual point, the variable in the game, you're just adjusting that by one because you want to keep track of where that is. So every time you move, you got to adjust that accordingly. And then this, um, this Y um, player on the screen. So, so far, everything above here has moved the player. Now, if you think about it, if all you move is the player, he'll walk right off your screen and he'll, you know, he'll be 50 tiles to the left and you won't be able to see him in just a few minutes, right? A few seconds. So, all of this code right here controls the movement of the player. And these next two lines are going to control the movement of the actual screen because the screen has to move so the player doesn't walk up the screen, right? So that's what I got these um, variables here for. And I start them at six and nine because I think that probably put, you know, like that'd be like the center for the average monitor. Um, I 
I'll probably end up doing some fancy math to um, calculate the width of the screen and then cut it in half. And that actually reminds me. Before I go over this code, I'm going to actually show you one other piece of code. Um, just remember, just do that so we can find it easily. Um, one other little snippet of code that I wanted to show you. Um, not player point. Okay, right here. Um, this rectangle is screen size. And this little code right here, it'll just give you a rectangle that is the size of the monitor. Um, so you can use this rectangle uh, going forward quite a bit if you want to put like a border around your, your game window, you know, you know, like a fancy looking border or something that you draw up. Um, you can use this rectangle to get the right size and that'll be the right size for, you know, all monitors. So um, screen size, that little code is what where I'm getting this variable screen size from. So if you look here, Y player on screen equals Y player. So this um, right here is that variable. And all it is is just a variable that every time you move, you're going to subtract or add one to it for each direction, X or Y. They're completely separate. Um, but you're going to subtract one or add one to it depending on which way you move. And then this one, if at any time um, Y player on screen location is less than or equal to three, you're actually going to move the whole um, screen. And I'll show you how I do that in a second. Um, but first, if you see, this is the player move up. Um, so if the player move up, I mean, everyone's screen's the same. It's always zero and zero, right? And then over here, you don't know what this this length is going to be. You don't know how long the screen is going to be um, or the bottom. So these can just be set to however you want it to move according to zero. So that's why I was able to use a, you know, a hard number here. But here, if you look here, this is not a hard number. This is number adjust with the screen. So screen size dot height. So um, how tall is the screen? You know, everyone's screen is going to be different. And you just divide that that number. So maybe these, maybe your screen is going to be like, I don't know what whatever screen is, 920 or something. <laughs> um, so you're going to take 920, divide it by 50 because it's an int. Uh, you know, any very any remainder is just going to get lopped off. So it's 950 divided or 950 divided by 50, and then minus three. 950 divided by 50 because my tiles are 50 each. That would make it move right at the bottom. But because I put that negative three, it'll he'll actually move when he gets to, you know, like this point here. So he'll come come down here, and then he'll get to here, and the screen will move up, and then he'll be able to keep, you know, moving. So that's how you deal with different screen sizes, or I should say that's at least how I dealt with it. Um, you know, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of making it all up as I go along. Um, I never like made a game like this before. So now move entire screen this function call and it just takes a string oh and also this is like a big function you're probably like man why is that guy's you know why is that guy's method so big <laughs> um but it's not that big because it's just if statement and then you got another i mean it's really only 10 you know 10 lines of code and nothing else is going to run so it's it may be 40 lines but you know it's only 10 lines of code really because it's just a bunch of big if else statements. Same with this one. I mean, it's a pretty big method, but uh, sorry, sometimes I code in C++ and their functions. So um, this method is really just, you know, 10 lines, but uh, takes a string direction. So if direction is equal to up, then that's, you know, past. If you look right here, move entire screen right. So that's what it knows. If direction is up, direction equals down, left, right. And then all it does is you're just moving the array. So you're looping looping through the array and you're just moving the tile uh, neg, neg one um, y. So it's just moving every tile um, negative one uh, on the y or the x. I hope that makes sense. You've got, a, you've got an x and you've got a y, right? And uh, the x and the y 
um, you just you're just adjusting it by one. So I hope that makes sense. I don't really know exactly how to explain that. Um, one thing I uh, oh maybe this will help. Let's go back to where was that at? Right here, tile X, tile Y. It's just counted out zero and Y. So tile X equals, see right here in my constructor, I have an X and a Y, and that's going to be the same because, you know, you're in this these four loops, so the X and the Y are going to be the same inside the loop, and then you're going to go to the next, you know, Y plus 1, Y plus 2, or Y3, Y is equal to 4, Y is equal to 5. So that's always going to be the same. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? It's kind of hard to explain. But, uh, that's what this, that's what these uh, methods do. All right, this video is probably getting kind of long. So thank you. I hope you're enjoying this stuff. Let me know if you have any questions and have a good day.